It is a pleasure to welcome to the program the author of the New York Times bestsellers, The Best Mo- Democracy Money Can Buy, Armed Madhouse, Vulture's Picnic, and his brand new, more or less, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, How to Steal an Election in Nine Easy Steps, available at all the outlets you would imagine, from uh, gregpalace.com. Uh, Greg, welcome to the program. Great to be with you, Sam. Uh, now, you've got a, a blockbuster story, which is the uh, on the cover of the Nation magazine. Uh, I believe it's the November 5th edition. Uh, it's available yes. now at their site. It just came out. Um, now, it's about the, uh, the, the GM bailout, and particularly a specific subset of that bailout, and who uh, managed to make millions upon millions of dollars from it. But uh, it, it's, it's, this is pretty weedy stuff. Walk us through this. We know in broad strokes that um, had it not been for the government providing essentially what functions as a bridge loan, uh, GM and perhaps Chrysler and certainly all the subsidiary companies that feed and provide equipment for this would have uh, gone out of business. We would have had millions of people unemployed. Yes. Go ahead. It's real simple. As it turns out, Mr. Romney, Governor Romney, who said, uh, you know, let Detroit go bankrupt to oppose the, as he said, Detroit doesn't need a check. It turns out that he was a silent partner with three hedge fund billionaires. They're known as vulture funds, headed by his main donor, Paul Singer, known as, who's known as the vulture. And these three hedge fund billionaires made over, so far, over $4 billion, all from the U.S. taxpayer. And as it turns out, in my investigations, I found out that one Ann Romney uh, earned at least $15 million, but more likely around $100 million as the Romney's piece of the action uh, from the government bailout funds. This is one of the weirdest, creepiest stories I've ever been on, Sam. It's in the book, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, but I expanded it out and continued the hunt for the nation, which came out today as their big cover story. So the Romneys made tens of millions of dollars, secretly, complex financial structure to hide it. Romney's three big donors, including his main donor, um, earned about a billion dollars and change each. Well, that's significantly and, more than I've made, well, in the first six months of this year. i got to wait and see how the year ends out. Um, yeah, you look right. at the W-2. Okay, so let's, all right, so let's walk through this. But how right? do they do it is, I guess, the, the question. Exactly. Um, um, go ahead. Walk us through this now. Okay. It, it, uh, I'm going to simplify it, obviously, because they, they're trying not, they don't want it to be simple. But what happened was is that GM has uh, split off the old Delco Auto Parts division into a company they called Delphi, which went bankrupt, Okay, which Romney thought was a great idea. Remember, let them go bankrupt. Okay, and uh, so Romney's buddies, uh, Romney's big donor, Paul uh, the Vulture Singer, uh, John Paulson, and Dan Loeb, who used to be Obama's big backer and switched, okay, mm-hmm. Um, they um, they bought up the auto parts division of General Motors out of the bankruptcy court for sixty seven cents a share for peanuts. They then flipped it after they got in um, about twelve billion plus in U.S. money. Their sixty seven cents was now worth twenty two dollars a share. That's a three thousand percent profit. A nice payday care of the U.S. taxpayers. They then, this is not the end of it, um, whereas General Motors uh, did its best to save jobs and pensions, Delphi had, uh, the Romney Group had 29 U.S. plants. They shut down 28 of them and moved them to China. There is not one single UAW worker left in the auto parts division, the former auto parts division of General Motors. General Motors gets its, its parts now from China, from the Romney operation. And every UAW member lost their job, every single one, 25,200 UAW members. In addition, you were hearing, and then they did this cute thing where they 
the Delphi uh, uh, salaried workers, non-union workers, lost big hunks of their pensions because the Romney group simply cut them off and said, we're not paying. This is not, and this was blamed on Obama in these commercials. These commercials were, there's seven million dollars of commercials blaming Obama for the loss of these pensions. Well, these pensioners don't have seven million dollars who don't have, you know, right. I've talked to some, there's suicides, there's bankruptcies, there's foreclosures. This was done by Romney's group that said, we're not going to pay. And the government can't pay because it's against the law. People don't understand. It's against the law for the government to pay those extra amounts. Right. It's, okay. it's right in the law. All right. No, so wait a second. So I want to go back here. Okay. So we, we've, got, um, we've got GM is on the brink of, of going under. And right. the government steps in and says, basically with TARP funds, and says, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to make sure. Because the problem that was facing GM it was mm-hmm. twofold. One is they're on the brink of bankruptcy. If you had let them go into bankruptcy, the idea that they could have reorganized and come out of bankruptcy was virtually impossible because for two reasons. Because one, no one is going to buy a GM car from a company that is bankrupt because they don't know if this company is going to be around in two years if their car breaks down and that anybody's going to be making parts for them. A and B. When you go into bankruptcy, you need to find somebody who's going to provide loans and who's going to That's work right. out a deal with all the creditors and, and GM because they get their parts from literally thousands of small companies, one of whom is a bigger company, uh, Delphi. Yeah, they're giant. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, that, that these creditors, you have to arrange with all these creditors to accept the terms of the bankruptcy, and nobody was going to step in and provide a huge enough bridge loan so that there would be time to work it out with all these creditors. So you needed that's, that's exactly right. essentially a bridge loan from a uh, an entity like the U.S. government to give everybody some sense of assurance that th- that be- that GM was going to come out of this. So yeah, the it's, government it's, it's has to brainer. negotiate. The government sits down and has to negotiate with some of the biggest creditors. One of those was Delphi. Yeah, but here's what happened. They sat down with Delphi. And the, understand, the, the U.S. Treasury, General Motors, uh, had a plan to save the jobs at Delphi. General Motors was going to buy back Delphi. Okay. Okay. Like they're just gonna. They remember they spun off in their in their desperation. They got rid of they got rid of their auto parts division. They got rid of their finance unit. Now they're trying to buy back their finance unit and their auto parts division. They worked out a deal with the U.S. Treasury, which would have saved about half the jobs in the U.S. Um, of the auto parts division. They would have saved fourteen of those twenty eight factories. Okay. Um, the um, and they worked out a deal where the nominal head of the company would be uh, Tom Gorey's, the, the billionaire who is the owner of the Detroit Pistons. He comes from Flint, Michigan, uh, where the Delphi plant was at stake. So he said, I'll, you know, I'm worth $10 billion. I'll, I'll throw in half a billion bucks into this for, you know, to be a Mich- I'm a Michigan man. So the deal was announced. You have to understand, the U.S. government GM and, and uh, the owner of the Detroit Pistons said, we'll buy back Delphi, we'll save most of the jobs, the union jobs, and we'll keep, and basically it'll be uh, back in General Motors' control. These vulture fund operators, Paul the Vulture Singer and his hidden partner, Romney, who obviously wasn't in the room because uh, he's a silent partner, limited partner is the term, um, actually told the auto uh, told uh, the U.S. Treasury, if you don't give us the twelve billion we want, and right now, right now, we are shutting down all auto parts deliveries. We will shut down the industry. That means you lose General Motors and Chrysler. And as it turns out, General Motors didn't keep any steering wheels and steering columns in inventory. They'd have been shut down in twenty-four hours. So people should be understand about this now. Business. Singer owned a big piece of Delphi, but he uh, teamed up with a, with these other vulture, uh, other vulture yes. uh, hedge fund guys, and they quietly, while this deal was being announced, bought up the rest of Delphi so that they can control enough to basically quash this deal, which would have saved about half the jobs for Americans. Well, I, I got to tell you, yes, the, the chief, I was able to get a confidential deposition from the courts of the chief financial officer of Delphi, who said Singer the Vulture swooped in after the U.S. GM uh, Detroit Pistons deal was created, after it was publicly announced and deal was done and dusted. Jobs saved, you know, 
you know, the whole thing. Um, after that deal was announced, he went in and bought a billion dollars of of old bonds, you know, from the bankrupt company that cost nothing. And he bought them up in two weeks, a billion dollars in face value of bonds, which he bought up for peanuts. And without any, and then suddenly said, oh, by the way, I happen to own this company now. Forget your deal. And, and go ahead. That's what it, so, and then, so what happened was, is that he, it was a brilliant financial maneuver done in coordination with these other uh, hedge fund operators and able to, um, you know, the bankruptcy court had no choice. There's, a, there's the way the weird laws of bankruptcy were that this could bid these old bonds as if they were worth their full value. It's a complex transaction called a credit bid, but it absolutely floor. It took the auto uh, team, GM, everyone was completely stunned and shocked that they pulled off this stunt, especially because. And, and then they said, and by the way, so we're going to shut you down. Your General Motors will be shut down. Chrysler will be shut down. Um, this, we're taking over. That's it. And we want this money. We want $6 billion from the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is the U.S. government. And we want another um, uh, $6 billion from GM. And since GM doesn't have any money, it has to come from TARP. And by the way, at that time, the U.S. government owned 80% of GM. So they said, GM... Viatar has to give us um, six billion, and the Pension uh, Guarantee Corporation, uh, Treasury, U.S. Treasury, has to give us another six million billion. Thank you very much, or we shut you down. And the U.S. GM and the U.S. Treasury just felt uh, um, they said it was extortion. That's the the word used by the uh, auto bailout chief. He said it was extortion, but he had no choice. Right. What are you going but to do what, at that I, point? You're going to allow yeah, essentially 1.5 million people because once GM and Chrysler goes down, all these other it. subsidiary companies go down. The guys who make the ball bearings in some small uh, uh, company uh, in you know whatever it is in Ohio or in uh, in Michigan with 25 employees, whatever. It, there's there's literally hundreds of uh, of 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 these type of small companies in that area, and it would have just been a cascading of disaster. Yes, and so the, I wish that the, that Obama had handled that his team that he used a better team. There's creepier parts of this story which I am still going to break. Obama's team should have done a much better job and assume that when they're dealing with creeps and I and I don't use that word very often, okay, as a as a BBC journalist, which is where this story started. Um, I don't often deal with vulture. If you're going to deal with guys like Paul Singer, you'd better be ready for the for the worst type of financial flim flam and attack. But what I think shocked everyone is when uh, Singer and the Romney group simply shut every plant, said goodbye. We don't want a single U.A. They made a point of it. They they issued a statement saying we are happy to announce we have we we will not have one single U.A.W. member. And, That's it. We're and, done. And, so, and they moved it all to China. And they moved all of that, that production all to of China. It. Not some of it, all of it. All of it, okay? They moved the entire operation to China. There's not one UAW member left. Yes, there are some plants, I should say when I say China, there's a couple of other Asian plants, which, by the way, they used some of the money that they got from the U.S. government to buy, uh, uh, when they did the shift, to buy a, uh, an operating auto parts plant from a company called Bain Capital. Okay, they spent. The, they gave a billion, pieced off a billion to Bain to buy uh, one of Bain's Asian operations to then send back parts to Detroit. There are no Delphi parts, not one. The biggest uh, Delphi remains the biggest uh, provider of parts to General Motors and Chrysler, and not none of it's made in in America anymore. It's all shipped in. This is boom. This is the Romney Group, and what you have to understand. I started this. If you go into billion, you get the story of this particular aspect of the deal from uh, the Nation story that's out today at Nation.com. But if you want, like, the full background of the Vulture and his lockup with uh, with Romney and the battle with Obama that he's had and Hillary Clinton, that's in the the whole story is in Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, which out four weeks now, all four weeks I have to say, have been on the New York Times bestseller list because I think because it has a comic book in the middle by Ted Rall, but. <laughs> But I like to think it's from my writing. But the it, this started out, you have to understand, I started investigating the vulture singer for BBC in the Congo. This is where this 
story began, I was investigating Flim Flam in the Congo uh, by these financial operators, and I'm looking through Singer's records, and I see Ann Romney. <laughs> right? What is this? So that's when um, I, I, I started digging in. And um, they, it, they nested it in all these little, you know, creepy shells. They put the Ann, Ann Romney Blind Trust, which isn't so blind, but nevertheless, I mean, because if I can see it, obviously Mitt Romney can see it. He was a CEO of a hedge fund. He knows how to read these well, financials. Well, we also know that uh, Mitt Romney mm-hmm. famously said that these blind trusts are basically a ruse. Are just a ruse, right? And so he, and so he, first, you have to understand what happens when this guy, when Mitt gives his money to uh, Ann Romney, because she didn't have anything. If it was under Mitt's name, he would have to declare if the profit were over fifty million dollars, which I'm quite certain it is. But because he put it in Ann's name, wives of candidates do not have the same disclosure requirements mm. as the candidates themselves. So he shifted the money to Ann. She gave it to the vulture. And, um, and then he put it into all these, uh, these uh, tarp plays, as he calls them, uh, Delphi, uh, Chrysler, and now the GM Finance Unit ally. And so... This is only the beginning of their take from uh, the TARP funds, the uh, Romney family. Nice. And now, and now, we, now, we can't really know ex- exactly what the, the exact dollar figure is, right? Because, of course, we've only seen uh, a year and a half, if that much, <laughs> of the Romney's tax returns. Well, they, made it, they didn't make it even that easy for you. Yes, I've asked them, obviously, again, for their tax returns. I've asked all these people for more information. I know that they made at least $15 million, but... Our best estimate would be $115 million. Um, and plus, uh, the, the vulture operators moved Delphi's incorporation from Troy, Michigan, to uh, the Isle of, uh, of Jersey, which is in the English Channel, this little tax haven in the English Channel. So Delphi is, is basically uh, living in this, uh, you know, operating from this tax haven. So in Billionaires and Ballot Bands, I explained that one of the reasons that this vulture investor, Singer, wanted to go after Obama is that, is that one of his big attacks, with Romney money, by the way, is on the nation of Argentina. This is a huge, huge battle, uh, which is hidden from the public. Romney and Clinton did an unusual, took an unusual step. Under the Constitution, they can go to court and say that... that that uh, a cer- certain actions of American operators are a violation, are, are um, undermining the foreign policy of the United States. So Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State and Obama as President used this unusual constitutional step to try to put the vulture out of business. Hmm. And he's gone berserk over this, berserk. This is not seen very much in the public, and I have to say that Obama did this. I'd like to say he did it because, uh, you know, he's concerned about the people of Argentina or concerned about the people of the Congo. Uh, it, part of it was that the big banks, like Bank of America and Citibank, um, are they're scared of Singer. They believe he can bring down the world financial order. Wow. So and- that's... And so this guy's going in and basically just scooping up a lot of debt at uh, at, at, at low prices and, and 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 flipping it essentially. Yeah, but he does it through these ransom techniques. Uh, for example, with Argentina, he just grabbed an Argentine sailing ship, you know, like an old frigate, mm-hmm. uh, you know, two hundred year old frigate, um, and literally like a pirate grabbed the ship on the high seas and has claimed it. And this is the type of thing that, that uh, Clinton has said is, is undermining the foreign policy of the United States. This guy's trying to bring Argentina to its knees. And, by the way, Romney would get a piece of it. And, and so one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, if Romney wins, who becomes Secretary of State? That's vital to his operation, because the Secretary of State under the Constitution can actually stop him. And Hillary is really, it, Hillary's really a big part of this story. She's been trying to stop Singer. Um, because he's undermining all our diplomatic relations with our allies. So who is going to replace Hillary? Presumably the foreign uh, policy uh, chief advisor to Romney, a guy named Dan Sonor. Dan Sonor's day job is working for Paul the Vulture Singer. Oh, well, so a... 
And of course, yeah, Dan Sam, Sam, I hate the, was, the, uh, <laughs> was the spokesperson uh, for essentially uh, Bush's illegal occupation and invasion of Iraq. Um, and so, the the, I mean, I, I mean, I guess the the uh, the the really stunning aspect of this is just you know how does a guy like Romney, who who speaks of how China is undermining our economy, who uh, ostensibly, I mean, this is the one thing that I can't get over uh, with, with, with Romney. I mean, here's a guy who's been I, sort of sheltering all his, uh, his funds. Right. Uh, He's, it's just, well, let me do this, Sam. I hate to say it, but I, everyone's screaming at me because I, I do have to run because okay. I'm getting calls. But let me tell you this. I appreciate it, and I'll be happy to come back and tell you the stories that are yet to come out. And uh, from this whole story of who the vulture is, his connection to Romney, and, by the way, he's the guy that picked out uh, Paul Ryan for vice president. I'd love to get into that with you because you you give me the chance to tell those real stories. Again, in Billionaires and Ballot Bands, you have the whole thing, but please go to Nation.com and get this piece of uh, of the creepy Romney story. But I'll leave you with this thought. There's no question in my mind. And again, now here I have to speculate, so I I can't tell. But that the reason Romney put his money with singers, everyone wanted singers' love, but Romney had something the other candidates didn't have, his own checkbook. Right. Pretty with uh, singers' uh, creepy stuff. I'll leave you with that. See you at, and uh, Billy, by the way, BallotBandits.org has the information on the uh, book, and of course it's everywhere. Greg Palace, uh, ballot bandits, uh, uh, dot org. Billing is a ballot bandit. Uh, uh, yeah, ballot bandits dot org. And we'll put a link up on uh, majority.fm. Greg, thanks so much for joining us. You're the best, Sam. Thanks. Bye.